Defense News is proudly sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. If you're a member of our nation's armed forces, the Department of Defense, or if your family is, we'd be proud to serve you too. On this episode of Defense News Weekly, the latest in the Army's next generation squad weapon. And lighter 50 cal ammo for Leathernecks? That's what the Marine Corps is looking for. Also, revving up for a cause that merges speed and support, the Rally for Vets program takes center stage at MCON. Buckle up and find out how you can get involved. Also, we catch up with Paradox Sports to see how some vets are using climbing to summit some of life's obstacles. And every day is Memorial Day for those who've lost a service member. We introduce you to one organization making sure of that. With the latest in news and analysis from the Pentagon to the platoon, this is Defense News Weekly. Welcome back to Defense News Weekly, I'm Andrea Scott. We have a lot of ground to cover at the start of the new year, so let's dig into some headlines. The Army's newest rifle and automatic rifle are already in the hands of soldiers for testing and will officially field to their first unit this year. The service delivered the next generation squad weapon rifle and automatic rifle, known as the XM7 and XM250, along with its advanced optic, the XM157 fire control, to a platoon in the 101st Airborne Division at Fort Campbell, Kentucky in late September. Officials told Army Times that platoon, along with the squad from the 75th Ranger Regiment, conducted user tests over the subsequent months as the Army ramped up for full fielding. The weapons are heading to a unit in the 101st by the second quarter of fiscal year 2024. The XM7 will replace the M4 for close combat units, such as infantry, scouts, combat engineers, and special operations forces. The XM250 will replace the M249 squad automatic weapon for the same units. The weapons and optics will drop the X in their names once fielded. Non-close combat forces will continue to carry the M4 and M249 for the foreseeable future. The Legacy M4 and M249 fire the 5.56 mm round, while the XM7 and XM250 fire the recently developed 6.8 mm cartridge. The Army began development of the intermediate caliber to better defeat enemy body armor and increase both accuracy and lethality at longer ranges. That effort began in earnest following the 2017 Small Arms Ammunition Configuration Study which identified firepower and range gaps in small arms across the Army. The Marine Corps has actively participated in multiple testing and evaluation sessions with the Army, provided feedback, and is monitoring the Army's development and fielding of the weapon systems. Machine gunners rejoice, but not just yet. The Marine Corps wants to make fire teams more agile, and it would be much easier if gunners had to transport lighter 50 caliber ammunition. The Marine Corps is reaching out to industry for market information as the service works to reduce the weight of rounds. The Marine Corps' request for information does not specify how vendors would shave off extra weight. In recent years, the service has looked into using polymer cartridge casings rather than the traditional brass ones. The Corps anticipates the lightweight 50 caliber ammunition would be delivered to the fleet by the end of 2026. All this talk of rifles and ammunition has us wondering. What's your favorite military firearm? It's got to be crew served or smaller. Give us a call and leave us a voicemail at 540-753-0567. And maybe your response will air on a future show or on social media. And now more from the recent MCON conference in Las Vegas, where military community was the theme. If you're feeling the need for speed, but still feeling unfulfilled, there's a program out there that could be for you. Rally for Vets uses the rush of the racetrack to drive toward a future free of veteran suicides. All eyes at the recent MCON conference in Las Vegas were on the organization's Corvette on the show floor, and the program's founder spoke to Military Times. 
our Rally for Vets program is uh, it has a couple of dimensions. Um, one of the dimensions, of course, is on-track racing. And we just finished our third year um, event at Summit Point Raceway, which is just outside of Washington, D.C. And this is a, an amateur race, and it's a, a, an event that anyone can drive in. You don't have to be a licensed uh, driver. Uh, if you had a race car, you could bring it, but most of our uh, participants bring their daily drivers. And um, so this is, it's a way to get a feel for what it's like to drive on a, on a racetrack in a very safe and controlled manner. So for the participants, it's the opportunity to, to drive in that kind of an event. Uh, but because this is focused on helping veterans and active duty uh, suicide prevention, you know, we have created something that's unique and that is that <clears throat> our event, which we call the Top Dog Championships, it's the only inner service motorsports competition in the world. And by that, you know, I mean that uh, the drivers uh, fall into teams. So if you're a, an active duty or a, an Army veteran, you're going to be driving for the Army team. And the same for the Navy and the Air Force. So think about the annual Army-Navy football rivalry, but played out on a racetrack with all of the services competing. And as a note, we actually had two Space Force drivers with us in October. <clears throat> um, so, so the benefit for the drivers is, you know, number one, a great day, uh, fun in a safe environment, and, uh, you know, the ability to compete with uh, their fellow servicemen a little, you know, smack, so to speak. And uh, the winning service team has their name inscribed on this trophy. And um, our next step is to present this trophy to the service chief of the winning service team, and they'll hold this trophy for a year until our next event. Now, uh, the funds that we generate from the event go to our service dog program. Um, we're working with another charity called Veterans Moving Forward, and Veterans Moving Forward trains service dogs um, that they provide to service uh, disabled veterans cost-free. And uh, our dog that's in training right now is named Woody. He's six months into his two-year training program. And we uh, so far have raised and donated $15,000 out of his $40,000 um, training cost. So for the veterans and active duty mil military guys, it's a great day on a great track for the charity it's uh, an opportunity to raise money and help a disabled veteran. Um, so that's what it's all about. It's, uh, you know, it's fun and uh, we would encourage anybody that's uh, interested in coming out and having a day at the track, even if you've never driven uh, what we call a high performance driving day, you can come out, make a donation, we'll put you in this car. And if you have no experience, we're going to give you um, a driver. So there's going to be an SCCA trained driver sitting in the, on the seat right next to you. So one thing we need is we always have room for new drivers. Of course we're looking for sponsors that would like to uh, connect with the veteran and active duty military community. And so there's a number of ways you can support the program. Number one, you can be a driver. Um, but we also have uh, a couple of other events you know, that are focused on bringing awareness to uh, veteran suicide issues um, outside of actually driving on the track. But if you're interested in connecting, just hit us on the website or you can um, email me personally at robert.rallyforvets.com and I will connect with you straight away. There are many ways to get involved. Learn more at rallyforvets.com. And when we come back, could you use the outdoors to help you recoup after service? Check out a group aimed at taking vets to new heights. Welcome back. After an army veteran suffered a traumatic injury in Iraq, he went on a personal journey of empowerment and found healing in the outdoors. The experience ultimately led him to establish Paradox Sports which helps veterans explore a similar path. 
Military Times' John Simpkins spoke to a member of the organization's board of directors at the recent MCON conference in Las Vegas to learn more. Okay, so I am here at the booth of Paradox Sports. They are an organization that works with a lot of adaptive athletes, uh, including veterans. And um, I'm talking with Jen Nam, and she is going to walk us through some of what we are, uh, what Paradox Sports has been working on. Um, and I, first of all, how did Paradox Sports get its start? Our origin story goes back to one of our co-founders, DJ Skelton, who's an Army veteran. And DJ, unfortunately, had a pretty traumatic military accident while deployed in Iraq. And coming out of that, um, as a veteran who goes through something very traumatic, he faced a lot of like physical injuries like to the left side of his body. Um, he actually has a glass eye now. But I think also with that, there's a lot of emotional and mental trauma that goes with going through something like that. And DJ, with the background of you know, as a kid, spending a lot of time in the mountains and outdoors, he thought through, you know, how can I help my brothers and sisters in arms who are going through really similar journeys? Like, how can we build community and empower veterans and others to lean into the outdoors and, and really, like, find this healing? It's a national, really sort of, like, set of activities. Even though they're, the organization's based in Boulder, um, we launch various rock climbing and ice climbing initiatives from, like, Yosemite to Smith Rock, um, Ure, and really it's a time and space for everyone from like all different kinds of uh, skill levels to just like spend time outside I think like really connect with one another um, storytell get to know one another and I think like once everyone puts that harness on they get tied up to a rope like we're all equals gravity is hard for all of us um, but I mean what DJ has built is really this like incredible space for us to just like share stories and, and build friendships. So you have gone on a couple trips yourself. Um, I, I'm in my personal life, have benefited so much from the outdoors and just the, the mental relief and the physical relief that comes as a part of that. What have you experienced on those trips uh, that has been evidence of that therapy for veterans, whether it be mental, physical, whatever it may be. You obviously talk about community building too along the way. What have you seen with your own eyes in, in terms of the impact to those people? Yeah, I I think climbing, um, you know, it just has this like, almost this transformative power where it's you and this obstacle, like it's you and this rock. And when one is at the base of that rock and they're tied in, it's really just like, how am I gonna get myself up to the top of this? And everyone goes about it a different way. Everyone has different challenges, but there is just sort of this like internal sort of process that happens where you're just like testing and, and like risk taking and figuring out like how do I get myself up this with the abilities that I have and just sort of witnessing that power and that focus and that like accomplishment is just I think it's like so powerful and cool to watch and then like even though the climbing is done in an individual capacity I mean there's a belayer there obviously but no one is really like climbing for that person um, there's also this sense of support, like everyone who is at the base of the rock that's like there is like cheering them on in like a very positive and supportive way. And so it, even though it's like an individual thing, like it ends up becoming this like whole community activity. And um, there's just a sense of irreverence, I think, like in that whole experience. And it's, it's pretty awesome. So what are you hoping to accomplish in the future? What, what does the future hold for Paradox Sports? I think similar to other nonprofits, like we have had a bit of a hard time with COVID. Although, I mean, the pandemic did encourage a lot of people to spend more time outside, but just in terms of like, you know, fundraising and hitting certain goals, like we are moving a little bit slower than we have in the past. And I think we'd love to continue to like build our community, get even more people out into the climbing, um, climbing outside in the adaptive community. We'd like to like, potentially explore other locations and just keep building our trips and, and figuring out other ways to bring folks in. Excellent. Now, before I let you go, um, I'm looking at this sign back here and it says, come summit the Grand Tetons yeah. with us. One of the, if, if not the best mountain range in the United States, one of. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this and, and what your, when is it, what is it, and what does that look like? Yeah, I believe it'll happen over um, September 11th weekend. 
and it's this annual trip that Paradox Sports does, and it's focused on the veteran community because um, Paradox is really adaptive climbing more broadly. Um, but this trip in particular will be for veterans, and it will be a pretty gnarly couple of days. I think actually several days where folks will have the opportunity to like do some training, skill learning, depending on where they are. And then some of the Grand Teton, which as you said, is one of the finest mountains. Um, personally, my favorite mountain range in the United States. I've had the pleasure of climbing this Burley Mountain myself. Um, and really like, I think based off of what I've heard from other people who've been on this trip, like there is sort of this transcendence of conquering this major mountain, but then doing it alongside your brothers and sisters where they have a shared context, they have similar history to you. Like, it's a, I, I've been told it's a really powerful experience and I'd like to go next year. Outstanding, well, I'm hoping to go and I'm hoping to see you there. Uh, so thank you, Jen Nam, um, and love what you're doing with Paradox Sports. Thank so, you, appreciate right. it. Thanks, John. Stick around, there's more Defense News Weekly after the break. Welcome back. Remember going to a bank in person? Seems like a relic of a different age, but the practice can still hold benefits. On this edition of Money Minute, Navy Federal Credit Union personal finance expert Jeanette Mack talks about going to the bank to see a real live human. It's no secret that we're living in a digital world, but there's something to be said about talking to a real live person and having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You probably haven't heard this from a financial institution too much lately, but banking in person can be just as easy and in some ways more rewarding than using an app. Credit union members and bank customers alike have expressed an affinity for the personal service and detailed assistance that branches can provide, in addition to the convenience of online and mobile banking. So when you're choosing a financial institution to bank with, look for the detailed or more complex services they perform in person that you can't get or are harder to understand online, like financial counseling, mortgage, or investment services. Of course, doing things online is convenient, but if things go south, it's refreshing to be able to walk into a branch and get help from someone who cares about your financial well-being. Bottom line, choose the bank or credit union that always puts you first online and in the branch. Thanks, Jeanette. We'll see you next week. To get more coverage of military and defense topics, steer your personal aircraft carrier toward militarytimes.com as well as defensenews.com. And to stay a step ahead of your commanding officer on news and events, sign up for our early bird brief, compiled each morning to bring you the latest headlines. It's also an audio. Check out the podcast version out each weekday. And if social media is where you collect your daily intelligence, follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter. And like most junior service members, we're on TikTok. So go find us there as well. And when we return, a group with a mission to keep the memories of fallen service members alive. We hear from the founder about one organization's work. Welcome back. Memories of Honor is a nonprofit in Nashville that commemorates fallen service members and provides support to their families. The organization strives to spread the message that every day is Memorial Day. They had a presence at the recent MCON conference in Las Vegas, where we caught up with their founder. Memories of Honor is a national nonprofit that honors and recognizes our fallen service members and their families, not just on Memorial Day, but 365 days a year. So we use athletics, entertainment, and special events to create living, breathing memorials so that no loss of life, whether in or due to service, is ever forgotten. As a uh, Blue Star mom of a active duty Marine who signed her Marine over to the Marine Corps at 17, uh, Memories of Honor was a way to love on the families whose Marines did not come home. We do activation and events all across the country. Uh, in the future, we would like to be able to capacity build so that we can send more packages to families of fallen service members. Most, if not all, of the events and activations that we do across the country, there is a um, we call them remembrance packages, where tangible things are mailed to those family members along with handwritten messages of love and gratitude by the attendees. It could be something as simple as a challenge coin, it may be a t-shirt from an event, 
uh, all the way to a game day worn jersey from a football game to banners that uh, from a uh, Grand Prix race. So there's always something that that family receives from us that has to do with that event. So to learn more or to um, have your loved one or your teammate added to our national database, you can visit us at memoriesofhonor.org. Go to Honor a Fallen and then register a hero. And that's how you can add them to our national database. No matter where we are in the country, no matter what we're doing, somebody somewhere will be reading seeing the faces of our fallen, no matter the circumstances of their loss. Whiskey is a drink that is used for celebrations, but it also can be a crutch during low points. Spirit and Coffee Company 22 Salute strives to shine a light on that kind of issue and creates drinks to bring awareness to veteran suicide. It also prints out information to the suicide hotline on its bottles and encourages individuals to pass up the bottle if they're using it as a coping mechanism. Here's more from their founder. 22 Salute is a spirits and coffee brand that was created um, for the sole purpose of raising money for veterans and first responders um, regarding mental health and suicide prevention. On our uh, spirit side, we started with a vodka that we filter 22 times to honor the 22 lives we lose on average per day to veteran suicide. And we also have a unique fig vanilla bourbon and we have a cold brew vodka coming very shortly. And then on the coffee side, we have a variety of 14 different high altitude specialty coffees, making them the top one to two percent of coffee beans on the market. And five of those varieties we actually smoke with a Texas mesquite wood while we roast it. I wanted to be able to meet people where they are. And so there's a couple of unique things that we did here. So on our vodka, I'll use an example. We filtered it 22 times to honor the lives that we lose per day. On top of that, it's a one liter bottle because there's 22 shots in a one liter bottle. We trademark those, which you can see in red towards the bottom as salute shots. One way to reduce suicide is build connection. So we asked people to do 22 shots together with friends and family. Also, we take, we tell the very clear suicide story on the back of our bottles, along with including the suicide hotline on every bottle. And I hope that all the other alcohol brands out there that are listening to this will follow our suit and add the suicide crisis line to their bottles. Um, but we're taking the suicide story for veterans and first responders to the retail public. And the last and final most important piece is our branding, when you see it on a shelf, let me turn the bottle so you can see it to the camera. If you see this on a shelf and you know what that stands for, and you're using this as a coping mechanism, alcohol, that we're getting in front of you in your darkest times. If someone wasn't able to reach out to you and say, your life matters, I'm praying that you'll see this bottle and you'll choose not to buy our alcohol or any other alcohol. You'll know your life matters. You'll walk out, not buy anything. You'll either call the suicide crisis line that we print on our products or reach out to a friend or someone else who can get you some help, including the Veterans Connection. We want to save lives, not just sell a product. And that's all we have time for in this episode. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next week.